Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Redivus H777 radio and why you might want to have a few of them in your shack. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Okay, so many of you may be wondering why I'm doing a review on an FRS radio. Uh, and in full transparency here, I was sent these radios in exchange for a video review. But I find that having FRS radios in your shack could come in handy from time to time. I can give you two different use cases for this. First, FRS radios, because they don't require a license, are a great radio to hand off to your children or your grandchildren to get them excited about the radio hobby. And you can hand these out to children as young as five or six years old and allow them to play with those radios and kind of uh, expose them to our hobby. The other use case I can see for these is maybe uh, during a communications outage like we experienced back in December, you might, uh, if you had five or six of these radios laying around, you might be able to pass those off to neighbors that are in close proximity to you and have a way of staying in communication with them. Uh, and again, because they don't require a license, it's a great little radio to hand off. So let's go ahead and jump over to the workbench and take a look at these radios. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up the box and see what we have inside. First, we have a little user's manual. And yeah, we might come back to that if we need it later on. Uh, next thing you'll find up is a battery. Now, this is a 1000 milliamp hour battery. Uh, at 3.7 volts. So I haven't done any testing on this to see how long it'll last. Maybe we can do that in the future. Next up inside the box, apologize for the crinkling of the plastic, is the radio itself. Uh, it does feel pretty good. It does not have a detachable antenna. Uh, looks like we've got an on off and volume switch and then a channel selector uh, here as well. So let's go ahead and put the uh, battery on. Well, I'll tell you what, before we do that, you can see right here that it does have the FCC ID number and the output power is uh, approximately 2 watts. Now, I was a little concerned with that power output. Uh, most of the time I associate FRS radios with a lower uh, power output of only half a watt. When we get over to the computer, I'll show you how they're getting around that limitation and running the full two watts. So it does feel fairly nice in the hands. Uh, I'm going to put that uh, pretty much on par with, say, a Baofeng UV5R. So uh, nice build quality here. Uh, I don't see anything that should give us any trouble or any complaints. Power on. Powering the radio on, it uh, gives you some information. It lets you know that the power is on, and it tells you what uh, channel number you're currently on. And as you move through the channels, it will announce which, which channel you're on. So it's pretty quick and easy to tell what channel you're on by listening to the voice uh, coming out of the radio. One thing I don't like is there's really no good, uh, real good visual indicators as to what channel you're on looking down. There are channel markers down here uh, on the bezel, but uh, black on black is pretty tough to read. So uh, if there was an upgrade that they could make, I would say... Uh, give it some white letters on that uh, black bezel there to make it a little bit easier. Uh, we've also got uh, a carry handle or strap in there. And then, of course, uh, the belt clip is in the box. Uh, last up is going to be the charging cradle. 
and then uh, the USB adapter uh, so that we can plug it into 110 power. So you've got options there if you want to plug it in and use 110 or if you want to use the USB. So let's go ahead and jump over to the computer and see if we can download the information off of the radio into Chirp. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is open up Chirp and we'll go ahead and download uh, the contents of the radio. Uh, so I'm going to select my port, which is USB 0. We'll scroll down and select Redivus. And then the model number is H777. So let's just go ahead and click OK and you'll see that it's cloning from the radio. Now, this is kind of what I was interested in seeing, was which frequencies exactly it was using, and uh, if it was using any uh, squelch method, so tone squelch here and a digital uh, squelch here. Uh, so it looks like, now I haven't tried to reprogram this radio, but it looks like if you wanted to make some adjustments in here uh, and maybe change some of the squelch squelch settings or something like that, you would be able to do so. Uh, going ahead and looking at the settings list, you'll see that we get uh, a few more settings that we don't have on the radio itself, so we can also make some of those changes. Now, one thing I wanted to do was I also went over to the FCC.gov website and pulled up their list of FRS frequencies. And if you notice, right here, starting with uh, what the FCC calls channel 8 through channel 14, these are all limited to half a watt. Uh, and most of the radios, like you'd buy at Walmart in a blister pack, they cover all of these frequencies, and therefore they're limited usually to uh, half a watt. Looking at the frequencies that uh, they're using on this radio, let me get this window scooted over a little bit so we can see both of them. You'll notice uh, over here on this list, they're only using 16 frequencies and they have omitted these frequencies here that are limited to half a watt. So that's the way you're able to legally use this radio at two watts. So, now that we've kind of established that, let's go ahead and give these a little bit of a range test and see what kind of range we get out of these radios. Okay, PJ, this is a test from the end of our street. How copy? Here you find. All right, stand by. I'm going to go a little further. All right, let's give it a second test. I'm about to turn left onto uh, the main road of the subdivision. Yep, here you just find. Okay, I am now at the edge of our neighborhood right at Compton. How copy? Yep, still copy, just fine. Okay, I am more or less in front of Sarah's house. How copy? Copy okay, but have a bit of scratch. All right, I'm going to go just a little bit further and see if we can maintain communication. Stand by. Okay, I am now at Trail Star Court. Can you still copy me? Well, as you can see, we've got about a half mile range with these radios. And that's in an urban environment with lots of houses and trees and things between me and my wife while we were doing this testing. So your results may vary depending on your location and what is between you and the other station. But still, I find that these could be very useful in certain circumstances. So don't rule out FRS entirely. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed it and found this useful. Be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.